Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. Reminder, reminder, Diamond Lifestyle class starts next week. You don't want to miss it. You will be sorry and sad when you read on Facebook and social media on Wednesday and Thursday about all the cool stuff that, um, that we do in the Diet and Lifestyle class, being live and interactive with Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Barnard, Dr. Ralph Moss from Cancer Decisions, Dr. Goldhammer from True North, and all the superstars of informed decision making and that sort of thing. So I think you, uh, you definitely want to be there on Wednesday night. And you can do it from anywhere. We have students in Europe and Australia, New Zealand, Scandinavia, Media, uh, South America, we've had them everywhere because it's live teleconference. So, and we record the calls in case you miss one. You can get CMEs if you're a doctor, continuing education if you're a nurse or a dietitian. So, Pam Popper at MSN.com, email me, we can talk. All right, so let's get to it. We're going to talk about blood pressure medication. Over a billion people worldwide have high blood pressure. Observational studies have shown an increased risk for cardiovascular events on a graded basis when systolic blood pressure rises over 115. Um, on the, and, and by the way, systolic blood pressure, that's the top number in case you're not familiar with this. That's what we're going to talk about here. Treatment with antihypertensive drugs has been shown to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and events for people with vascular disease or renal disease or hypertension with organ damage and people with systolic blood pressure of 160 or higher. There continues to be a lot of debate, however, about the benefit of medicating people who have a low risk of cardiovascular events, who don't have vascular disease, who have systolic blood pressure lower than 160. And um, while there are some studies that have shown benefit, I have covered some of those and I'm not too terribly impressed, but um, the Heart Outcomes Prevention Evaluation or HOPE 3 trial was designed to determine if medicating people with lower risk factors improved outcomes. And that's what led to writing this article today. I want to tie together a lot of information I've covered before and incorporate HOPE 3. Well, HOPE 3 was a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial that involved patients at 228 medical centers in 21 countries. Researchers looked at outcomes from lowering blood pressure with a combination of angiotensin receptor blocker drugs and uh, diuretics, statin drug, and a combination of both interventions and intermediate risk individuals. Subjects were men and women 55 years of age and older who had at least one risk factor for cardiovascular disease. These are considered lower risk people. The risk factors included low HDL cholesterol, uh, dysregulated blood glucose levels, current or recent smoking, and mild renal dysfunction, uh, dysfunction. So they could have one of any of those things. People who had known cardiovascular disease were excluded from the study. In addition to taking medications, all participants were given individualized and structured lifestyle, lifestyle advice with follow-up visits at six weeks, then another six months, and then every six months after that. Between 2007 and 2010, 14,682 patients were enrolled and over 12,000 of them entered the uh, randomized portion of the study. 6,356 were assigned to the combination of blood pressure meds and the other to placebo. Now some patients, there's a difference between the two numbers and what happened is in the initial part of the trial where everybody was getting a drug, some patients dropped out because they experienced side effects of the drugs, um, which included um, noticeable hypotension and abnormal, abnormal lab tests. So there were actually 12,000 and some that uh, entered the randomized portion. Now here's what happened. The researchers reported that treatment with a combination of uh, candesartan and hydrochlorothiazide for 5.6 years did result in lowering blood pressure. And that's the thing. If you look at these drugs and supplements, they will change your blood work and your biomarkers. But drug treatment did not significantly lower the risk of major cardiovascular events in intermediate risk people without cardiovascular disease, low risk of diabetes, or mild re re renal dysfunction as compared to placebo. There were side effects, however, um, including a higher risk of symptomatic hypotension, dizziness, and lightheadedness. So no benefit, some side effects, which we would call risk. The researchers included in their discussion results from two other studies that looked at the same issue. One was the action to control cardiovascular risk and diabetes, that's the ACCORD study, and the other one was the SPRINT study that I wrote about a couple of times, both last year and earlier this year. Now these trials included um, patients with high normal systolic pressure, but in the, the difference in those trials was that the patient's risks were higher than in this HOPE-3 trial, and a lot more medication was used, and 
and lower blood pressure levels were achieved. But here's the thing that's important, and I've written about this in the past. The studies showed that most patients didn't benefit. There were even higher risks of much more serious side effects. So what you see is the more aggressive the blood pressure lowering is with medication, the more side effects you get, and you don't really get much benefit. One trial, the Blood Pressure Lowering Trialist Collaboration, showed an 18% lower risk of major events. But here is the difference in this trial. The patients had higher systolic blood pressure at baseline, give or take 155. In the HOPE-2 trial, some risk reduction occurred for subjects in the upper one-third of systolic blood pressure, but there were no benefits for patients who had baseline systolic pressure of 143.5 or lower. The researchers concluded that the benefits are not determined by the magnitude of blood pressure lowering. They really are determined by what the blood pressure is at the start of treatment. And the higher it is, the more likely the patient it is, is to benefit, the lower it is, the less likely the patient is to benefit. Um, they reported their findings con contradicted the idea that lower is better. And the, if, if that's the problem, if a little bit is a good idea in medicine or diet, everybody thinks lots of it must be better. But a lot of this lower is better is based on observational studies where it's shown that people who have lower systolic pressure have fewer events, less cardiovascular disease. But that doesn't always translate to the same thing resulting when you use interventions like aggressive um, medication uh, uh, administration to lower blood pressure. The researchers also found something called a J-curve, which I'll explain in a minute. It exists for major cardiovascular events in medicated people. And um, so what, what, what the J-curve is, is it shows that there's higher risks at higher levels of blood pressure. The risk falls as blood pressure is reduced until some threshold is reached, and it varies by trial, but anyway, and then further blood pressure reduction causes an increase any events. So um, it, the idea that more is better, really not so much because there is a threshold where you reach the limit of what treatment will do. And that threshold is, is tinier and tinier drop depending upon the size of the abnormality. In other countries, uh, doctors are much more conservative in prescribing medication for hypertensive patients. The British Hypertension Society instructs doctors to, quote, this is what it says, initiate antihypertensive drug therapy of sustained systolic blood pressure of 160 or greater, or sustained diastolic pressure of 100 or greater, and diet and lifestyle change and weight loss don't work. Okay, that's a significantly higher threshold. We're taking people who have elevated blood pressure in the range of 143 systolic pressure, calling them hypertensive patients and putting them on drugs, and that's where the problem is. The better option for most patients with hypertension is to work at lowering their blood pressure with a plant-based diet like the one we teach here at Wellness Farm Health. It's been proven to lower blood pressure. Side effects include weight loss, more energy, improved appearance, lower risk of cardiovascular events, a lower risk of most degenerative diseases, a much better risk-benefit profile than medications in most, most cases. Now, there are um, six different references for this article. Uh, I try to reference everything that we do really carefully here. Uh, people write to me sometimes and say, well, why don't you post the article um, in the YouTube channel? We don't do that, but if you're interested in articles with references, these are posted in the Health Brace online library, and they're posted at about the same time in the library that you see them on video clips. And so if you want to become a subscriber to the library, just call our office at 614-841-7700, and the folks here at the office can help you with that. All right, well, that's all for today. Um, have a wonderful Memorial Day. And uh, remember, if you're going to some kind of picnic or family event, don't eat anything I wouldn't eat, okay? Just keep my little voice in the back of your head. Ask yourself, what would Pam say about this thing I'm getting ready to put in my mouth? And I bet you'll put it down. All right, have a great holiday. And uh, on Tuesday, we'll send out the newsletter. There will be no video clips Tuesday. Thursday, I'll be back next week with more news.